t- tell us, uh, you know, why is scaling important in the cold fusion world? Because maybe people haven't really thought about this topic. Right, exactly. So the session tries to address kind of the bit starts off with addressing some of the big picture items as far as what you're really um, almost from the install, uh, making those first decisions um, from OS to, to the to the connector setup to what features you you want to actually install with Cold Fusion, and then walks that out into um, knowing your key performance metrics, and then and then all the way through understanding session strategies. So a lot of questions you get hit with immediately as soon as you start looking at installing and how you want to implement Cold Fusion. And that's what we try to do in this session. Yeah, so you're going to be you you're going to be speaking at CF Summit East on this topic in Washington D.C. in a few months, um, but maybe uh, we should just back up a minute, you know, before we go into the details of that, you know, just to ask, take a devil's advocate position here. Why can't you just stick more memory and more CPU and have one server? Absolutely. So the idea here is you want to you want to remove the single point of failure, and that's the key aspect of the discussion. Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be looking at how we can set up an environment where we know if one server goes down, whether, whether unbeknownst to you or you're just trying to do maintenance, you have a, a plan in place that you're, you will have, you'll be able to take a server out and know your sessions are gonna to continue to perform. Not, not everybody needs seamless sessions, but uh, the, the folks that do, that get the high load traffic, that you know, the e-commerce sites that need to have that failover, these are topics that are going to be important for them. Yeah, because if, you, if you're running that kind of site, if the site goes down, it's costing you money. So that's, you know, a reason. And it's costing right. your reputation as well online. Right, um, If your site's like, not run. And I deal with customers that have that high sensitivity and it's, you know, if something goes, does go down, it takes, you know, they do a, a they spend hours on figuring out exactly what that was and why it was down. And yeah, it's not a small um, little restart the server event. And you, you mentioned uh, maintenance. So, you know, if you have a cluster of several servers, you can take one down completely, do some patches, you know, upgrade the hardware, whatever, and it's not going to affect your website that you're running on that cluster. That's correct. So yeah, so right out of the gate, you're going to have a plan for, for how you're going to manage your sessions. And, even, and then it even comes, goes into your code because if, if you choose EH cache for your sessions, that'll change how you store your session variables as opposed to if you use some of like the new features in 2016, such as Redis, where you can actually use the session dot scope. So it, it, you know, you, from right out of the gate, it's, you know, these are important decisions. And you know, a lot of times if you have legacy code that already has all the session dot scoping, um, it's gonna make it a little bit more of a challenge to, to move to an EH cache. Not impossible, it may take a few, few days of code changes, but you can do it. Right, and the, and the issue there is that you've got variables that uh, are valid for the whole user session and they're coming back multiple times and they might be going back to a different server in the cluster. Cool. And if you don't deal with it correctly, they're, they're just not going to see those variables. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, that's one thing.